Hello and welcome to an Apps in the Sky video. I'm Jules and today I'm going to talk to you about Firebase functions. I've got two basic functions here I'm going to show you. Um, but let's start off in Firebase and we'll look at some um, test data that I've created that we're going to be working with today. So here you can see on the left hand side of my browser I have a Firebase database that I've created. This is a real time database and in other other uh, videos that we'll create we'll talk about real-time databases but for now we're just going to talk about Firebase Cloud Functions. So I have a node here called Cakes and in my Cakes node I have three cakes just to show you some uh, data. I have a chocolate cake, a cheesecake and a key lime pie. And what we're going to do is on my on the right here I have a quick Ionic app that I created so that we can add new cakes. But what we want to do is add the name of the cake and then we want the system to, to add a use by date and a sell by date. And this in a real life situation would be done because a sell by date and a use by date on, on any food product is normally the same um, no matter what. you know. So if I make a product, I package it, then it will go out of date in X number of days and that number of days will always be the same. So when the person making the product logs it in the database, we don't want there to be any human error, we don't want them to forget to put that date in, so the, the back end of the database will do that for us. So in this case we're going to create a function which is triggered by the date by somebody en entering a cake into the database and what it will do is it will add the sell by date and the use by date so let's have a go here okay so what we'll do is we'll add a test cake and what you should see is it going into the database is a green entry and then it will be um, added to and it will go yellow to see that the record has been edited so here we go there's green and there's your yellow with the two dates that have been added. It happened fairly quickly, but that's great. That's what we want. So all my Ionic app did was literally save this name of the cake to the database in a new record. It used a push to get an automatically generated key, and then our triggered function added the sell by date and use by date. So let's have a look at the code. So I use uh, Visual Studio Code. Um, it's just my preferred um, tool for editing TypeScript and JavaScript and um, any other HTML uh, based apps that we write. So here we can see um, I've created our Firebase folder on my hard drive by using the Firebase init command. I'll link in the description to the instructions of getting started with Firebase functions. It means you need to install the libraries um, and then use the command line to create a folder. Going through that process you will log into your Firebase account and you'll select database for this to be run against. Um, if there's lots of requests for it I'll create a video showing but it is very well documented on their site. But what's not documented incredibly well is the, the, the basic features, basic functions rather that, that I use almost on a daily basis. and the first one is a database trigger. As you can see here, this is us de declaring a trigger. It's going to be called on new cake, and it's going to happen when a new cake is saved into our cakes node. So the first thing that happens when this is triggered is this event object is passed in, and this contains the uh, the key of our um, new cake that's been brought in. But the first thing we want to do before we start dealing with this cake record is just to make sure that the event is not null and actually contains an event. So if it's not got a value in the event for our cake then we're just going to end the function by calling return. But In this case there will be a cake record so what we'll do is we'll get a ref we'll get a copy of that cake ref that sorry cake record so that we can use it in a in a little bit we're going to then get a reference to that cake in the database because we're going to want to add data to it in a moment we're going to get today's date and store it in a variable 
and then we're going to create the sell by date by adding three days to this date to today and then we're going to use we're going to create the use by date by adding four days to today then by using to date string because in this case we we're going to just for the test data we're going to want strings that we can read so we can read the date we don't want um, a big long number from the epoch that we would usually save in a database you wouldn't normally save dates as strings um, we don't normally so just so we can read it so it's human readable we'll make it a UTC string so here we have the sell by date and the use by date and they're put in to our cake reference they're updated in the cake so let's let's upload that so here we have PowerShell just here um, apparently I've put cake ID in a couple of times so what we do is we say Firebase deploy only functions and we have the name of our function which is on new cake on new cake and what that will do is that will upload our function to Firebase it takes a little while so we'll fast forward the video here um, and come back when it's done okay great that's done so you can see up the top here that the lint has given us some helpful advice about how to improve our code if this was production code I'd go through and I'd fix every single one of those but because this is um, just some test code to demonstrate functions I'm not going to worry about these unused variables or these you know how they've been declared um, but you can see here the function was deployed and again we go to our browser window we can add another cake just like that so there you go there's the cake record and it'll be updated so normally if you're retrieving data from the database you would just use normal the firebase references using the firebase library in our case we want to have something a bit different we this isn't a real world situation but we're going to use it for demonstration purposes so the other type of firebase function is a HTTPS request this allows you to open up a function in your database a little bit like a store procedure in um, SQL but you would normally use PHP to access that store procedure so a direct replacement for that is using a Firebase HTTP request. It's written very similarly to a, a cloud-based function. It is actually a cloud-based function, but it's it's written as a HTTP request. So you get the request, and you get an object to put the result into. So what we want to do with our HTTP request, as you can see here, is we're going to get the cakes, and we're going to iterate through them all and see if they're safe to eat or out of date. So let's go through the code. So we're going to get a reference to today's date so that we can compare it with the date in the cake. Then we're going to create a reference to the database where the cakes are, where the records are that we want to view. Then we're going to create a promise and we're going to retrieve those cakes from the database. This gives us a cakes result object um, which basically is an array of uh, results similar to what SQL does and give you more than one table in this case we're just using the first table zero and we're going to get the value and put it into our cakes variable we're then going to use a for loop to iterate through those cakes this key is the key that you see here this is the, like, the primary key if you will and that's the ID for that node uh, and we're going to use that to get the cake in the first cake record from from the list of cakes from the database we're gonna make sure that that cake has a use by date it's possible that it's null somebody something could have come in and edited the database and we don't want to crash the function obviously we've got to we've got to uh, code defensively here so if we do have a use by date we're going to get it from the record and then we're going to set the status of this cake record we're going to add the field status and if today right now is 
after is greater than the sell by date, sorry, the use by date, then we'll say out of date. If it's not, we'll say safe to eat. We'll then put that cake, this cake, back into the list of cakes because it's not it's not an automatic link, it you have to put it back in. And that will have updated that cake record in our list of cakes. Then what we're going to do is we're going to take our JSON object which is cakes, because this is JavaScript at the end of the day, so it's a JavaScript object notation, uh, and we're going to turn it back into a string using json.stringify, and we're going to return that as the result of our HTTP request. We're also going to set the status to 200, which is OK, and that will end our function, and that will tell the client that it was successful, and here's the result. So I use a Chrome plugin, uh, called rested and here we can see a URL that we're going to use to test this um, function where we get that from is when we upload our function get cakes as you can see here I've got the name of the get cakes um, it will give us a URL. So again, this will take a little while, so we'll fast forward, and when it's finished, we'll come back and we'll sh I'll show you where I got the URL from. So the upload is finished. It says deployment complete. And if you see this line up here, this is our URL for our function. We didn't get that when we uploaded our trigger function because it's not accessible via HTTP but this is a HTTP request so we get the URL here so all we can do PowerShell is awesome here you just select it right click it and that copies it and then I know it's already here but I'll show you you can just paste it in there you go uh, and then all we do is we send request I'll do the request to the Firebase and here you go you can see the results so this is a JSON object that represents the cakes in our database so what we'll do is we'll go to Notepad++ I have a plugin in here um, it's called JS Tool and what this allows us to do is a JSON, JSON, Java, uh, a JSON format so let's put our JSON data in here Make sure it's all selected. Plugins, JS tool, format. And what that'll do is that'll just put it into a nicer format so that we can read the data a bit easier. Here we can see our first ID, chocolate cake, we've got our sell by and use by date that we had from our previous function. And this has been added. As you can see, it's not in our data. Apologies, wrong tab there. See, it's not in our data. The status is not in our data our HTTP function has added that. So as you can see, this one's out of date, used by date. I'm, as I record this, it's the 13th of March. Um, it'll probably get uploaded in a couple of weeks' time. But yeah, today's the 13th of March, and as you can see, there are, that one's out of date. That one's safe to eat, because that's next week. That one's safe to eat, because that's next week. As this one is, and as this one is. These ones were all uploaded on the same day when I recorded this video so they all have the same use by and sell by date so there you go you can see two pretty standard everyday uses for firebase functions there's obviously a lot more that we can do here and we'll go into that on a more advanced video um, but let's why don't we have a look at the the console let's see what's available here so we have our database here on the left and this shows our data we can we can expand and contract and we can navigate through our data uh, we can even edit the data so I can I can rename this cake and I can hit enter and that will rename it for us and that will appear next time somebody accesses the data um, we also have rules for the database I won't cover that in this video but this controls access for reading and writing to our database we have the options for backups and to see statistics on use, um, usage. But what we really want to see here is functions. 
So as you saw, we had two functions uploaded, our get cakes and our on new cake. You can see here, this one's a HTTPS function and this is a database function. So this is a database trigger. And you can see that I've run it a few times today. Um, this is the yeah, basic activity log. And this gives you an average time of how long it took to run each time it ran. And you can see this one's a little bit more involved because it's having to iterate all the data and make changes to it. Whereas this one is just a bit quicker because it just has one record, has to do an update, and it's done. Now what we can do from here is we can access uh, more detailed usage statistics. I won't go into that now, but you can see the logs. And this is a really useful development um, tool because this enables us to, to do debugging. Because obviously this is running on a server belonging to Google and there's no way to really debug. So what we do is we use the JavaScript uh, console.log function and it allows us to write to the console in here it'll also give you any errors uh, it'll also give you uh, you know information about when it was executed uh, and again I'll go into that in a in a future video when we uh, we cover more complicated things so that's very useful um, so that's it for today if you have any questions please let me know in the comments below you can go to our website at www.appsinthesky.com there's lots of information there there's blogs um, there's data. There's information about us. You'll see. Uh, you'll see Tom and I there. Um, please like our video. Well, if you didn't like it, thumbs down. That's fine. Uh, please comment below. And if you wouldn't mind, please subscribe to us. We're going to be releasing videos regularly, and we'll be doing some fun stuff as well as technical stuff. So, so that you can uh, kept up to date with that. Make sure you uh, subscribe below. And I'll see you on the next one. Thanks. Bye-bye.